Ah, Jamaica beautiful and nice. So I could just live the life. And that mean what? Blessings again, guys. So in today's video, I will be sharing another interesting piece of Jamaica's history in store format. And guys, you're gonna love that one, trust me. That one is agonize. So this video is gonna be about the breadfruit plant and how it actually got to Jamaica. And we can tell you know, the plant itself, breadfruit, went through a lot just to get to the Caribbean. So without any further ado, if you haven't yet subscribed to Elite Jamaica, consider doing so by clicking that red subscribe button and turning on notifications by clicking the blue bell icon so you never miss any of my updates. I will be trying to do these videos two or three times per week, so if you're interested in this type of content, just remember to give this video a big thumbs up. And join the video guys, bless. The Voyage of the Bounty, still waters of the Great Golden Sea. Flying fish like streaks of silver, and the mermaids that sing in the night, the southern cross, and all the stars on the other side of the world. This was a toast given by bounty midshipman Roger Byam to his 1787 voyage to collect the breadfruit. These dramatic words heralded the start of an equally dramatic voyage to collect a simple fruit. Named for the fact that its thick, white, starchy interior is reminiscent of bread. The breadfruit was in high demand by the 18th century British West Indian planters, particularly those in Jamaica. Between 1780 and 1786, Jamaica suffered from an alternating hurricane and long periods of drought that destroyed crops. Slave provision grounds were hard hit, and there was a major food shortage. The planters were concerned because they knew that without a reliable food source, their slaves would die of starvation. From as early as the 16th and 17th centuries, there had been talk of a tree in the Pacific Islands that provided a source of bread all year round. The planters offered large rewards to any captain who would bring back such a miraculous plant. When this failed, they petitioned King George III to organize a special expedition to find and deliver it. Captain William Bly, an experienced 33-year-old seaman who had sailed with Captain Cook on his second voyage around the world from 1772 to 75, was named the commander of this expedition. His crew, including first mate and good friend Fletcher Christian, set sail from Portsmouth, England for Tahiti and Timor and the HMS Bounty a few days before Christmas, 1787. Their mission to collect seedless breadfruit plants and deliver them to Jamaica. Thus, our connection to the mutiny and the bounty. What many see as the greatest mutiny ever. Some 10 months later, the bounty arrived in Tahiti. Set up, camp and Bly began the process of collecting the plants. So tireless was Bly's pursuit of the plant that he soon earned the nickname Breadfruit Bly. Five months and over 1,000 plants later, Bly decided to set sail for the Caribbean. Two weeks into that 1789 ocean voyage, however, members of his crew, led by first mate Christian, mutinied. They set Bly and 18 crew members who remained loyal to him adrift in an open boat and threw the breadfruit plants overboard. Some were even used to stone Bly. They're trying to take over the ship. There's a mutiny! <laughs> This treacherous act, which was turned into a famous history, now terms the most famous mutiny ever, may have been committed because Christian wanted to return to Tahiti, where he had found his true love. Others say the reason for the crew's anger was Bly's arrogance and his excessive concern about the survival of the precious breadfruit cargo. Bly is said to have denied crew members water in favor of using it to irrigate the plants. I'm afraid he'll die without it. You'll give no one water without my permission. The mutineer set a course for Tahiti, leaving Bly with very little food, dependent on his pocket watch, sextant and his navigational skills for survival. Luckily for him, they were outstanding. Bly completed what many feel is still one of the greatest recorded feats of navigation. He covered over 3,600 miles in 41 days before setting foot back on land. 
It is no wonder that many consider Bly one of the greatest sailors to have ever lived. Only one of the 18 men with Bly died, and that was due to stoning by angry natives on an island where they tried to land for provisions. Meanwhile, Christian and the rest of the mutineers realized that they could not return to Tahiti for fear of execution. They therefore sailed around the Cook Islands looking for a place to hide from the British warships they assumed were after them. The mutineers eventually would end up in the Pitcairn Islands of the South Pacific. Within 10 years, only a few of the mutineers were left alive. One of them, John Adams, repented and became a reformed Christian, eventually giving his name to the capital of Pitcairn, Adamstown. As for Bly, he was exonerated and sent on a second voyage to collect the breadfruit for the West Indies. This time, he set sail with more, than, more men and more ships. Although he suffered from fevers and migraines during his second voyage, he managed to deliver over 2,000 plants representing five different varieties to the Caribbean. On February 5, 1793, his ship, the HMS Providence, landed in Jamaica, stopping first at Port Royal and moving on to Port Morant, where some of the trees were unloaded and planted at the Bath Botanic Gardens, where some of the trees remain today. Plants were also distributed to other parishes. This was not Bly's first visit to Jamaica, he had lived in Lucy Anova from 1783 to 1787. Bly was awarded 1500 guineas by the Jamaican Assembly. The breadfruit grew naturally on Jamaican soil, but it took many years before the slave population would attempt to eat the fruit they regarded as a strange. Today, the breadfruit tree can be found all over Jamaica and enjoys strong ties to the Caribbean cuisine. On that 1793 voyage, Captain Bly also introduced what we now call Otaite apples. Their name comes from their island of origin, Tahiti, which in the 16th and 17th centuries were widely known as Otaite. Bly's connection to the Caribbean cuisine does not stop there, however. He also has ties to Jamaica's national fruit, the Aki. Found all over the island, the fruit is born in clusters on evergreen trees. Its name is derived from the West African Akai Fufo. The tree is not endemic to Jamaica but was introduced from West Africa during the 18th century. The plant was further named Blygia Sapida in honor of Captain Bly, who took samples to London Kew Gardens in 1793. Sapida speaks to the fruit's savorness. Although Aki has been introduced to many other countries, Jamaica remains one of the countries where it is most widely eaten. In some African countries, however, Aki skin is used as a soap and pulverized Aki as fish poison. Here we look at the origins of other Jamaican fruits and spices. Guaz, guava, cassava, cashew, and cocoa are native to the West Indies. Guava is an Arawak word, and cassava is widely used by Tainos who call it yoka, meaning staff of life. Cashew thrives best in areas of low rainfall, and at one time in Jamaica, cashew nuts in their shells were used in several children's games. Cocoa, found in Jamaica from before the time of Columbus, rose in importance after 1847, when the manufacture of chocolate began. Pimento. Pimento is indigenous to Jamaica. Grapefruit. Interestingly, Grapefruit is said to have probably originated in Jamaica because the first written record of the term grapefruit comes from Jamaica in 1814. Its name comes from the fact that it grows in clusters like grapes. The grapefruit is a hybrid of the sweet orange and a citrus plant named Shaddock, after the captain who first brought it to the West Indies from Polynesia in the 18th century. The Artanique, a uniquely Jamaican fruit first propagated in Manchester, is, as its name suggests, a cross between orange and tangerine. Let us look at some not so native fruits. Banana and the pineapple. The banana and the pineapple were introduced to West Indies by the Spanish. The banana, meaning food of the wise in Latin, arrived in Jamaica as early as 1520. The gross Michel variety came from Martinique in 1835. The pineapple appears on the Jamaican coat of arms and the pineapple watermark is used for printing of Jamaican currency. It is believed Jamaica supplied Hawaii with its first commercial variety of pineapples. Coffee. Coffee originated in Ethiopia and was first planted in Jamaica at Temple Hall St. Andrew by former Governor Nicholas Laws in 1728. Mangoes came to us from Lord Rodney's 1782 capture of a French ship at sea. The Guinep 
came to us from Suriname around the mid-19th century, and Soril, a member of the hibiscus family from the Sudan. Nutmeg. Nutmeg was brought to Jamaica by a Dr. Martyr, most likely from the Dutch Spice Islands. Yam. Yams, whose names come from the Sengalese Nyami, meaning to eat, were another important crop because they provided the crucial vitamin C that enabled sailors to battle the dreaded scurvy. It is said that yams came to Jamaica from Africa in a Portuguese slave ship. Ginger Ginger is one of the island's earliest exports. Sugarcane and tamarinds were introduced to Jamaica from the East Indies in the 16th and 17th, 17th centuries respectively. From the early 18th to the middle of the 19th century, sugar was the island's chief export. Thank you again for joining me guys. It's a pleasure having you here and I hope you enjoy this video. If so, please remember to subscribe to the channel by clicking that red subscribe button and remember you can turn on notifications by clicking the blue notification icon. Guys, I'm starting to do these videos so if you enjoy these videos, please give me your feedback and we can discuss these topics further. Once again, I am Alex. Bless.